My name is Teresa Wilkie. I am the director for RigLogix at Westwood Global Energy. So we are a data intelligence company. We cover all different aspects of the offshore industry. Um, and that ranges from offshore rigs, which I work on, to offshore wind, uh, to uh, subsea developments. We have a consulting um, division as well. So we, uh, yeah, that's what we do. And in your presentation today, you were giving us a bit of an overview um, of the data that you've gathered in RigLogix and one of the other platforms that, that you use. Um, could you just give us an overview of, of some of what you've talked about today in the presentation? Yeah, sure. So uh, myself and my colleague Tom Payne, we were both presenting on the offshore rig market today. So some of the key things that we've been seeing in the offshore market um, is increasing uh, utilization across all three major segments. So that's jack up semis and drill ships. So that is really off the back of increasing demand, um, especially for floating rigs. So in your sort of deeper uh, water areas, such as the Golden Triangle, so the US Gulf, um, Brazil and West Africa. So that's a, a real uh, area of increasing demand for the deep water side and for your, your semi subs and your drill ships. And then on the shallow water side, so your jack ups, um, we're really seeing this uh, real drive from Middle Eastern national oil companies. Um, and so we're seeing really the majority of new demand uh, coming from there. Um, and that's for a lot of the sort of domestic um, uh, reasons behind you know, the, the national oil companies. So um, that is really spurring uh, uh, those increases in utilization for uh, the, the jack up side as well. Okay. And, you, and you've marked utilization across the board as being, or committed utilization, I think, across the board right. as being quite, quite high, sort of historically. Yeah. High. And um, what's what's that picture? Has that picture changed? You know, over the last sort of six months, and what are you guys were seeing for the next twelve to twenty-four? I guess. Months? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So committed utilization um, is a, a bit of a different way of looking at offshore rig utilization. So not not only does it include rigs that are on contract, it also includes rigs that have future contract, but which may be, you know, in a shipyard undergoing a reactivation or warm stack currently, but it has a future contract. So that does uh, sort of elevate the utilization numbers a little bit, but it's what we would consider as true, you know, it would show the true availability within the market, because although some of those rigs are, um, you know, currently available, that, you know, they are, uh, they do have work coming up. So really they, they, they aren't available. Um, so in terms of trends with utilization, uh, what we've seen over the past six months um, is especially, I guess, especially in the jack up and drill ship segments is probably where we've seen the most uh, increases. Um, uh, the semi sub side, not so much. So I think uh, we sh both showed around about 82% utilization currently compared to 95% for drill ships and around 90, 91% for jack ups. Um, and that is mainly because we see the majority of uh, demand for semi subs coming from the North Sea. And although there is uh, contracts coming out of there, it's a area where we haven't seen the same level of recovery. And this year also we do expect, uh, especially on the Norwegian side, to be a little bit soft in terms of demand for uh for rigs from that area and so and that is actually where the majority of um semi subs work uh so because of that um we just haven't seen that sort of same recovery in the utilization over the next year so we do expect to see further increases um, in utilization obviously your drill ship and your jack up markets are already very high um, and we do anticipate anticipate more demand growth so what because of that, um, and because the markets are already very close to sold out, what we expect to see is some react, some more reactivation of um, rigs from cold stack, and likely more new builds coming out of yards as well um, and being put to work. And um, so we saw a lot of stranded assets um, uh, over the, the the last downturn. So the sort of 2014 downturn, there was a lot of drilling contractors that ordered. Um, 
uh, rigs speculatively. They didn't have contracts in place. And then obviously the uh, downturn hit. Uh, there was less work for them to go to and a lot of them got stranded. They were, uh, construction contracts uh, were sometimes cancelled. And so rigs had to, uh, rigs were kind of left with the shipyards and who now often own them. Um, so, but now we have actually seen just over the past couple of months, um, some of these rigs being um, either bare boat chartered from uh, shipyards or being bought. Um, so we expect to see more of that as well to help kind of fulfill that additional uh, demand that we're seeing coming out of the market. Um, and we do actually expect to see further increases in terms of the semi-sub market in terms of that committed utilisation. Um, we have seen a trend uh, emerging over the past, I would say six months or so, uh, six months, a year even, of some rigs leaving the North Sea um, because of that softness in demand and actually being put to work in other regions. So we've seen, uh, we'll see three year, uh, three rigs, sorry, three North Sea semi-subs uh, go down to West Africa this year. Um, we saw last year a couple of jack-ups move, go to Africa and to the Middle East and Mexico. Um, and potentially, if demand doesn't increase this year in that region, we could see those rigs uh, yeah, move, to, uh, up, move to other regions um, where they can get um, you know, a, a decent term contract and they rate. Okay. Um, so I guess last question in terms of like future market expansion, um, in addition to the stranded assets that have been picked up on bare boat charters or um, you know, bought outright, uh, when do you foresee new orders um, happening? Well, that's such a good question. <laughs> no, that's a great question because a lot of people are asking that, okay, so what happens when or if the new build supply, uh, you know, the, the stranded supply or the currently under construction supply runs out? Um, I don't foresee many drilling contractors taking that jump of ordering a, a new drill ship or a new jack up anytime soon. Not speculatively, anyway. Per perhaps if there was a partnership between an operator and the costs were a split. Um, I think there's just so much scar tissue left mm. after the last cycle. Um, there's not an awful lot of free cash to, mm. to be used to buy that. Um, so I guess I don't have an answer for the question, but I, I don't expect it's any time this year or probably not next year. Um, I think most people will be waiting to see how 2023, 2024 pans out in terms of those new builds coming out, those reactivations happening, and then we'll see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think that's definitely an answer, a good answer. Um, and I think, you know, also probably factoring in there, in addition to scar tissues, maybe like, why would you, you know, in lessen the sort of supply demands or, or mess with the supply demand balance that's sort of in their favor at the moment. Yes, By exactly. More that's it. The more yeah. the more supply that comes in, um, then yeah, that sort of supply demand uh, balance goes the other way against the operator. Whereas when it's a tight market like this, that's when day rates um, are moving up 